excited. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. We got a jam-packed day full of a ton of information to help all of you grow your Amazon business. All right, so the external operations, the EOs. Daily habits. Who is, are they here? No, someone was asking in our live mentor call on Monday, what are your what are your daily habits? And I was like, bro, we're gonna talk about them on, on Saturday, so just attend the live event on YouTube and you'll be able to get them and then we'll provide all of this to you afterwards, right? I think you were on the call, Nicole. Some of you were on the call. Ramon was there, so. Um, so daily habits, these are things I literally do every single day. First thing, I, when I go in is I check yesterday's sales and profits. Right, I wanna see if there's any outliers. Who wakes up one morning, who has woken up one morning and you see like, wow, sales have skyrocketed. Right, you maybe do, you usually do, let's say 7,000 a day or four, 700 a day and then all of a sudden your sales tripled in one day. Who's, who's that ever happened to before? Right, and you're like, wow, that's so cool. What's the first thing you do? You figure out what happened. Right, you wanna know what product it was, if you still have inventory in it, you know, if you need to replenish it, because it's, it's generating more revenue for you. So that's one of the first things I do every single morning. I'm analyzing yesterday's sales with the previous day, with the previous month, with the previous week. I'm looking at profit margins. And then another thing I do, which I encourage everybody to do this, is I go to my orders tab. I change it from its uh, default of 20, and I switch it to 100 so I can see all the recent orders. And I'm just looking for outliers. You should be looking for outliers of the, the morning sales. So from the previous night to the morning, and what I'm doing is just scrolling first five pages, and I'm looking like, okay, did this listing I just sold 80 of in the past five hours? Maybe I have an opportunity to go to my repricer and raise the price $2 to pull some more profit out of it. Because if it's selling that fast, it means somebody sold out, right? Someone was dominating the buy box, sold out. I wanna eat more, I wanna make more money, so I'm gonna raise it, dollar fifty, two dollars $2. And then if I stop getting sales, you just put it back. And you get sales again, but it's a great opportunity to pull daily profits out. And then inventory. You wanna make sure your products are in stock, right Sebastian? Always, wanna make sure your products are in stock and you wanna also look at the products that have been stocked too long. Mm. You have monthly fulfillment fees that Amazon's charging you for products that you're not moving. So typically, if we didn't intentionally order something for, for 90 days or six months, when we hit that 90 day mark and a product is still in our Amazon, in the Amazon fulfillment centers, we're dropping the price, we're running coupons on it, we're checking our PPC, our wholesale PPC campaigns, we're doing some sort of discount to try to move this product because we know by the way that we source, by the way that we analyze products, we could find a better product, we could find a winner. But it's sitting in Amazon waiting, too many people just wait, wait, because they wanna hit that 20% profit or 25%, 30%, and they're unwilling to drop it, even break even on it, just to move it out so you could find a winner. So you can get that cash back and find a winner. And then buyer messages, obviously, you gotta, you gotta check the account health step, right? And that's kind of the last three things. So you gotta check your buyer messages. You gotta make sure you had no IP complaints or any issues that need to be addressed in what, 72 hours, right? For us, there, there's no real standard that Amazon states, but all account health issues should be addressed to some extent within 72 hours. Doesn't mean a resolution needs to be provided to them. Simple communication that we are looking into the issue and will provide an answer shortly will suffice. As far as your buyer messages go, those should be answered within 24 hours. And if you're not, it will impact your buy box for sure. Yeah. It's one of the metrics for the algorithm. And then one of the last things we like to check every morning is our stranded inventory. Because if inventory is stranded, it means you're not making money out of it. Sometimes it's as simple as updating the listing. You know, it might be missing a pack size or a bullet point, and they just want you to, there'll be a little red box around it, you click edit listing, and you just fix it, right? Sometimes you gotta, if anybody doesn't know this secret, this is a good one too, it's not really a secret, but you do, you copy the merchant SKU, you save it somewhere on your computer, email it to yourself, you delete the listing, and then recreate it with the same merchant SKU, and it will refresh the listing and move it out of stranded sometimes. So that's an option as well. Now Sebastian's gonna dive deep into, uh, deep into account health here. Who here has any account health issues? <laughs> I thought so. So this is one of the least favorite of my things to do with Amazon and, and running a business. And unfortunately, this is not a task that I could delegate, at least early on. I needed to dive in, I needed to learn behind the scenes of what was happening in Amazon and why I was getting these complaints, these violations, these of, of terms and services. 
you know, of why brands were claiming products were counterfeit, trademark when they weren't, because the proper information wasn't out there online. Amazon wasn't providing guidance, so I had to do my work and dive in. You know, who, who here has had issues with suspected intellectual, you know? Yeah, yeah, so that's a big one. That also is one of the easier ones to fix. As far as the Amazon trademark policy for the suspected intellectual, most of that's pretty easy for that one specifically, not the other stuff. But that one, they actually tell you what the issue is. They'll say Disney. So what they expect you to do is to remove the word Disney from anywhere in the listing. Title, bullet points, description needs to be removed. Now, if you're selling a Disney product when the UPC that is on the listing matches the actual UPC of the product you have, then all you need to do is just search in Seller Central trademark policy. And you'll see how some trademark issues, Amazon literally updated this like three months ago, how some trademark issues are actually not trademark issues and they give an example of their own brand and if you're selling that same brand and it's authentic, they give you a paragraph which all we do is copy and paste it and say this is an authentic product that we're selling. As, as far as Amazon guideline goes, we put that paragraph in and then copy the URL in. That's simple and it always gets resolved for us. Maybe not the first time, maybe we get the wrong seller support person, but if we send it in again, we always get them resolved. Then your other one is your received intellectual property complaints. Anyone getting those from brands, complainants? These need to be addressed. This, this is, to Amazon, this is huge. You know, unfortunately, there's some bad players in the game, brands that claim products are counterfeit when they're not because they don't want you selling on their listings, and so they cause trouble. What you need to do if you're not gonna hire a lawyer, which many of you aren't because there's just too many issues, you know, it's too prevalent, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to reach out to the complainant. First, you gotta make sure you have the proper documentation. Does anyone know what the proper documentation is that you're gonna need when you fight back? The invoice, exactly, thank you, Ramon. You're going to need the invoice. That invoice is gonna have to have your Amazon business name on it. It's gonna have to have the address that you registered with Amazon on. It's going to ha also have to have the company's business name, the company's address. If the company's website is on there, phenomenal. A way to contact the company, phone number, email. Eric, how many times have you got, we, we also run a wholesale business. How many times have you gotten calls from Amazon for sellers that have purchased from our wholesale business and they want to verify that a product is Almost every authentic. week. Almost every week it's an Amazon rep calls me and says, hey, I have invoice number, blah, blah, blah. Can you confirm that this was purchased from your wholesale company? And then I just say, yeah, yeah, actually I pulled up the invoice. Here it is. If you'd like a copy, let me know. So all the time, they actually check this information. They are checking the information. They are very active in checking and verifying that what documentation you're providing is real. And too many people have reached out to us that have provided changed documentation, <laughs> to, to put it lightly, and they get their account suspended immediately, you know? So you want to have the proper documentation. And if you have that, you're going to want to reach out to the complainant. And you're, it depends. You have two sides. You're either going to want to reach out to the complainant and tell them, I want to resolve this issue. What way can we do it? Or you can try to fight it. If, you want, if they do not respond, within a week you send another email. If they don't respond again, within three days you send another email. Then what you do is you save that, you print it as an Adobe PDF, and you're going to provide all this inf information to Amazon. You're gonna just tell Amazon that the last thing you wanted to do was get Amazon involved in this. However, the complainant was non-responsive, and so you had no other choice. Here's the documentation. Here's my supplier information. Here's the communication I tried to have with the complainant, but they were completely unresponsive. And for those two, it may take a couple of tries, but we always get them resolved. What's the last one? Product condition, You got pro complaint. product product condition, customer complaints, yeah. and authenticity. And a lot of those, um, now Amazon's asking for plan of action for you know a new product sold as used. However, for a majority of those, invoices work. Just providing invoices. So now 2D box labels. How many know how many people know about 2D barcodes for your boxes, for your shipping? Show of hands. We got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. It's, it's weird, it's only course members who saw that. It's interesting, it's interesting that, that, that that's there. Uh, but 2D box content labels. It's an additional label. It doesn't have to be, you can put it on the same label as your shipping label that you put on your inventory when you're shipping it to Amazon. 
and it allows your inventory to get received in a fraction of the time. Who would like their inventory to be received in a fraction of the time? Right, because what happens now when your inventory is received in Amazon, Amazon opens the boxes and they literally have to scan each FN SKU. And then it goes into these conveyor belts and it gets you know, split up to these different directions and some go to this truck and some go to that truck. But when you start using these 2D box content labels, they just scan this QR code here. They don't even open it. It goes straight to a truck into a different fulfillment center. It literally will save you days, if not weeks, right, Sebastian? Weeks. Our products get checked in within 24 hours. You have to understand at a fulfillment center, they're already so congested. The last thing they want to deal with is the products that they sideline that don't have these labels, which based on our discussions with our Amazon account rep and others at Amazon, within 18 months, they're gonna make this a prerequisite, a requirement for shipping out products because the products that don't have this, the packages that don't have this, get sidelined until they can get to it. Mm -hmm. And there's thousands of products, thousands of cases in front of your boxes, your cases, before they can finally get to you. Versus for us, it's going on a conveyor to its final fulfillment center, whichever truck is at that dock and being shipped right there. Yeah, it also streamlines your internal, right? The first uh, topic we talked about, it, it streamlines your internal operations because it makes it a little easier to package. I'm sure a lot of you are using like inventory lab and you're putting them in boxes, then you're printing the labels. You got boxes with no labels over here, boxes with no labels over there. Who's doing that right now? Right? I'm sure some of you are, so it can get a little confusing early on. You know, and it also allows you to turn inventory quicker. The more units you can sell, the more money you'll make, as long as the units you're selling now, are profitable. When you're looking at this, you have to understand what, what we bring inside the, the program, this is, and this is something you can do too to streamline your efficiencies. You're probably looking at the top and saying, hey, this looks familiar. That's your FBA shipping label. Underneath, we added the 2D box content, so now we eliminated having to put two labels on every box. We keep it to one box that is fine with Amazon based on their policies. We have not had an issue, and it reduces cost of labels and also reduces the time needed to yeah. put that label on. Of course, you're like, oh, what's, what's the difference? But when you're doing thousands and 10,000 and 100,000 different boxes in a month yeah. period, it takes up a lot of time. Yeah, we did the math. In a day, we, we, we send out about 2,000 cases, right? Like full cases. So imagine having to process 2,000 additional labels. It's like an hour worth of work, you know, when you spread it over the course of all the employees. So you gotta be thinking with the scale mentality. Like, cause it, you might be like, oh, well it's easy now, I'm only sending out five. But if you can understand this early on, imagine when you're selling out, sending 50 or 500. You know, that's when it really gets simple. Relationship opportunities.